Well, hello, second year, and welcome to my favourite geography classroom. It might not have four walls, but it's the best place to learn about geography. And if you take National Fire Geography next year, we'll try and get you to places like this as often as we can. Who knows, we might get to Iceland if these COVID rules get, uh, get changed one of these days. Have a look at the following slides that will go through the National Fire course with you, and hopefully I'll see you in S3. So the great thing about geography is that it covers science, humanities and the arts. So it's a real mix of physical, what we call scientific physical geography and human geography, um, which makes it a particularly useful and interesting subject. If you're wondering what uh, Jack and Victor are doing there, you'll find out in one of the next slides. So as you can see, the first unit is human geography, which really looks at people and how they interact with the world. Uh, topic one is population geography. We go on to look at urban geography, which is the study of cities. We do a case study of Glasgow, where we look at the city centre, the inner city and the edge of the city. And then we do a spe specialised case study of transport and shopping. So you'll see some photos related to those in the next few slides. The connection with Jack and Victor, uh, by the way, in case you're wondering, is um, a lot of Glasgow's housing um, in the inner cities consisted of high flats, which of course was where Jack and Victor lived. So maybe there's an opportunity to do some geography research on still game. So as I said in the introductory clip on YouTube, it's really important to get you out of the classroom experiencing the world for yourself through fieldwork. And we'll do that from as early as possible, starting with the Glasgow unit. We then move on to look at Mumbai in India. And we do that to contrast a city like Glasgow in the developed developed world with a city like Mumbai in the developing world. And as you'll see from the next uh, two slides, Mumbai is really a city of contrast, some extreme um, wealth contrasted with some horrendous poverty. And the final topic of human geography is farming. So again, a bit like the urban geography, we look at farming in the UK and we contrast it with farming in India. Uh, and uh, we can see the differences between farming in a developed country and farming in a developing country. And around February in S3, we move on to Unit 2, which is Physical Geography. Physical Geography is all about the more scientific side of geography, looking at geology, landscapes, weather, etc. Um, in the National 5 course, we'll start off by looking at weather systems and how the weather impacts on people and also how the weather is forecast. Uh, so it's a bit more scientific than what we do in S1. Then we move on to look at landscapes. <coughs> We look at glaciated landscapes, which are essentially the Scottish Highlands, which were formed during the Ice Age. And we do a case study of Loch Lomond and the Trossachs National Park. And then we look at coastal landscapes and we go down to the south of England and do a case study of a place called Dorset.
So around November in S4, we move on to the final unit, which is global issues. There are two specialist topics that we look at in this unit. The first one being health and disease. And we do a case study of malaria, AIDS and heart disease. And the second topic, specialist topic, is natural disasters, where we do case studies of uh, tropical storms, which you probably know better as hurricanes, earthquakes and volcanoes. Most people agree this is probably the most interesting unit of the topic, of the, of the course, sorry. So we really save the best until last. So you'll see in the following slide that 20% of assessment is by a fieldwork report. We take you up to Lathloman National Park and have a really nice day in a town called Calendar. And then we go back to school and make up graphs and tables. And we eventually write a report about that, which makes up 20% of your assessment. The exam itself is worth 80%. Now this uh, project report is very successful for us. We, over the last few years, we've managed to get at least half of you getting 20 out of 20 for it. The average mark is usually about 18 and a half out of 20. So it's a really good opportunity to get marks in the bag and go into the exam with a good level of confidence. So more good news is that there's no big essay questions in the exam. This is a typical exam question of six marks. And this is the maximum number of marks they can ask you for any one question. So this would require you to write six good sentences to get your six marks. Um, but nothing more demanding than that in terms of English or language skills. Now, if you think a trip to Loch Lomond National Park is not exciting enough for you, then we would be reasonably confident that at some point in the next two years, we will be able to start our trip to Iceland again. We intended doing this every two years, <clears throat> and then sadly COVID came along. But I'd be pretty confident we'll get to go to Iceland um, at some point during the course of your National 5, uh, your national five sort of studies next year or the year after. So the following slides show some of the amazing things that you see when you go on the trip to Iceland. So the last few slides just look at a variety of careers that are connected to geography. And as you can see, there's a huge number of careers that a geography qualification will enable you to pursue. And also the, the skills you learn in geography, such as analyzing data um, and information are very transferable. And a survey a few years ago found that um, geography graduates have a better chance of getting a job and earn more money than any other academic subject. Uh, that means a sort of non-vocational degrees. So there's really good opportunities in geography. So I hope you've enjoyed listening to the show. And um, if you've any other questions, feel free to message me or pop up and see me. Um, and as I said at the start, maybe or hopefully I'll see you in S3.